welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, a UFS module for use with single board computers. UFS stands for Universal Flash Storage and is a form of NAND flash media that for several years now has been used on mobile devices including phones from Samsung and Google. However, until recently, single board computers with either onboard or modular flash storage have been limited to EMMC or embedded multimedia card, which is significantly slower. And when it comes to ARM SBCs like those I often review on this channel, even those with a PCIe interface have been limited by the PCIe version used, the available number of lanes and other hardware constraints. And so, the fastest read speed I've ever recorded for a storage device on an ARM SBC has been 1688 megabytes a second on the ROC 5B, with the Raspberry Pi 5 topping out at 816 megabytes a second. Now, it's important to stress that whilst these are the best results obtained on the hardware I've personally tested, there are other boards out there, such as the Plus and Ultra versions of the Orange Pi 5, that have a PCIe 3.0 4 lane interface like the ROC 5B and which may offer comparable or better performance with an NVMe SSD. However, the fact remains that ARM SBCs have not been blessed with the kind of storage performance now enjoyed by most x86 systems. And the speed of EMMC on ARM SBCs has generally been below 200 megabytes a second with the read speed of 144 megabytes a second for the EMMC on the Banana Pi M5 being pretty typical. All of this brings us back to universal flash storage, as a UFS 3.1 module like this has a maximum theoretical read speed of 2100 megabytes a second. Some SBCs are also becoming available now with UFS support, and in this video we're going to be testing this module on a ROC 4D. But before that, let's learn a bit more about universal flash storage. In February 2011, JEDEC published the first UFS specification. Many revisions followed, notably including UFS 2.0 in September 2013, UFS 3.1 in January 2020, and UFS 4.1 in January 2025. Over time, new features have also been introduced, with UFS 3.1 very notably introducing Write Booster, where part of a drive is used as an SLC buffer, as well as a deep sleep power mode for when a device is idle. In April 2015, Samsung's Galaxy S6 was the first phone to ship with UFS storage, specifically including UFS 2.0. Samsung has indeed consistently been a leader in UFS, and has a great set of web pages that detail the technology and its products across different versions. In July 2016, Samsung even introduced UFS memory cards as an alternative to microSD. These went on sale in 2020, but have only been used in a handful of Samsung laptops. However, I did manage to find this UFS card for sale on eBay, which allows us to gaze in bewilderment at its rather wacky shark fin form factor. Today, UFS is not just used in phones, but also in many mobile devices, including tablets and cars. So, what about UFS in SBCs? Well, to use UFS, an SBC has to be based on an SOC with UFS support. And some Rockchip, MediaTek and Qualcomm SOCs with this are now finding their way into Raspberry Pi competitors. More UFS SBC hardware is also on the horizon, including RADS's Dragon Q6A, which is based on a Qualcomm QCS6490. Future RK3688 boards will also have UFS support just as soon as Rockchip finishes developing this successor to the RK3588. As the table shows, some of the existing boards have onboard UFS that's soldered directly to them, whilst others have a UFS module socket. 
For their board, friendlier leg sells 64 and 256 gigabyte UFS 2.0 modules. However, Radsa's UFS modules, like the one we're about to test, are UFS 3.1. And, returning to the versions table, this promises pretty decent performance that may beat anything I've tested on an ARM SBC. Right, let's now turn to our test hardware, which, as I just noted, is a UFS 3.1 module from Radsa. And whilst 3.1 is not the latest standard, as far as I'm aware, right now the Radsa UFS modules are the fastest available for use with SBCs. The UFS 3.1 modules are listed on Radsa's website in capacities of 64, 128, 256 and 512 gigabytes, as well as 1 terabyte. However, I can currently only find 64, 128 and 256 gigabyte modules on sale. The one we have here is also 128 gigabyte, as we can see on the back, and it costs me £28.59, and this is currently $37.57 or €32.85 before tariffs. The claimed read speed is up to 2,100 megabytes a second, with a claimed write of up to 1,800 megabytes a second in write booster mode for a 512 gigabyte module. However, as always with flash storage, the write speed will be lower for our smaller capacity 128GB drive, and here, if as I suspect, our module is based on a 128GB Samsung UFS 3.1 chip, the write speed will be up to 850 megabytes a second. So, let's open this thing up. I think it just uh, clicks at the end, like uh, that. There we are, and it's in a little bag. I'll try and keep this in view, it is very small. Oh, there's a bit of tape. I'll bring in Mr. Scissors, or a bit of Mr. Scissors you can see there, and just uh, cut through that, and hopefully somewhere inside here. I'll find it eventually. Where is it, where is it? And yes, there is our UFS module. I think it should be uh, that way up. And uh, if we take a closer shot of it, it looks like it does indeed use a Samsung UFS 3.1 chip, with the SEC printed on the chip, standing for Samsung Electronics Corporation. And I do find it amazing that they can now fit up to one terabyte of high-speed storage into such a tiny package. If we use the magic of filmmaking to turn the module over, we can also see the contacts that are used to clip the module to an SBC. Although, do note that only one row of these pins is used to carry the UFS interface. Talking of which, over here we have the ROC 4D SBC that I recently reviewed and which is currently still fitted with a Raspberry Pi M.2 hat and NVMe SSD. But we're going to remove these and instead install the operating system on the UFS module, which will clip to the underside of the board down here. But how, you cry, are you going to get the operating system onto the UFS module? Well, by the magic of capitalism, I've purchased this, a Radsa EMMC UFS module reader. And this will in effect turn our UFS module into a USB 3 drive. This cost me £12.89 and also sells for $16.99 or €14.85. So let's open it up. And last time I opened up one of these shrink-wrapped Radsa boxes, I used Mr. Scissors, and people said to me, no, 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 you should be using Stanley the Knife. So this time I will try and find a corner and uh, start it off. Oh, it did work better, didn't it? There we are, taking your advice, and uh, things were going so well then, and now they've gone badly. Dear me, there we are, we're getting in. Every unboxing has to fail somewhere, Chris. Here it is, look, it's in a little bag. And uh, is it a sealed bag? No, it's a bag with a... A thingy, isn't it? There we are. Oh, we've got it out eventually. Crinkle, crinkle. Come on, come on, come on. And here we are, our UFS or EMC module reader. And uh, let's put it down and take a closer look. There we go. And we can clearly see our UFS pins. There they are. And so I think it's now time to fit our UFS module. So uh, let me bring it in. And uh, this is a tricky thing to do without getting my fingers entirely in shot. But there we are. That is fitted. Let's flick it up that way around just to be, well, just to be cool. 
And so I think we can now start to test UFS performance. So, here we are on a Windows PC where I've plugged in our UFS module in its USB 3 reader and it has appeared as a drive. It was clearly already initialized and formatted. And if we look at properties, we can see it was pre-formatted NTFS. Don't know what I expected, but that's how the drive comes. And because the module is currently in a USB 3 reader, we cannot test its full speed here in Windows because it isn't connected to Windows via its native UFS 3.1 interface. Even so, I thought you might like to see a test of the UFS module in the USB 3 reader. So uh, let's kick off things here in Crystal Disk Mark and use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there we are. We now know the speed of our UFS 3.1 module in a USB 3.0 reader. And these are good results for a USB drive. But we all want to see what happens when we access the UFS card on a computer with a UFS interface. And so for that, we need to write an operating system to the UFS card. I've got Blender Retro all running. We just need to select our UFS drive. There it is. We will select and flash. And as usual, use the magic of filmmaking to accelerate time. And there we are. We're now all set to perform some far more exciting tests. Greetings. I've now fitted the UFS module to the Rock 4 d as we can see. And indeed, the board is all connected up and running. And if we go across to the default Debian KDE desktop, I can report that everything is working just fine, with the system being very responsive running from UFS. And for those who may be interested in this particular board, it's worth noting, as we can see on the RADSA website and the pages for the ROC 4D, that a different Debian image needs to be installed to run from UFS compared to running from microSD card or an NVMe SSD. So let's uh, close that down and open up a terminal and do an lsblk just to see what we have. And we can see clearly SDA here is our UFS module. And of course, we're about to run a speed test. So I'll just enter the command. And this will give us a read speed for the UFS module. And before we see what the result is, it's worth noting that when we ran this test on an NVMe SSD, we got a speed of 301.58 megabytes a second. That's with an SSD connected via the PCIe 2.1 one-lane interface on the Rock 4 d And when we ran this test on the microSD card, we got a result of 65.84 megabytes a second. So let's see what happens with the UFS module. I've yet to run it, so we'll see what happens. Here it is. And oh, the tension's killing us. What's it going to be? 826.2 megabytes a second. And that's certainly a very respectable result for a read speed on an ARM SBC. If we go back to the table we saw earlier in the video, it's faster than any test I've run on, for example, a Raspberry Pi 5, although it's not as fast as some SBC NVMe SSD implementations. Right. I've been musing on how to do some further read and write tests, and I suddenly thought, ah, I could use the disks utility that's included with Ubuntu and Linux Mint and various other distros, although it isn't included here in this version of Debian with a KDE Plasma desktop. But that doesn't have to stop us. No, I can just go to the software manager where I've searched for disks and I've installed it. So let's launch it. Like that, is it beneath? It is beneath. And we can now therefore go to the drive, that is our UFS module. And if we go to the menu here, we can do benchmark disk and then go down to start benchmark. And it is possible here to click to perform a write test as well as a read test. Although as it says here on the screen, this only works with exclusive access to the disk. And so it can't work here because our UFS module is the system drive. And so what we're going to do is this where I've rebooted the system from a micro SD card. We've still got the UFS module connected. Fortunately on the ROC 4D, the boot order is first micro SD card, then UFS module. And as you probably noticed, I've also made a few scaling changes so we can see things more easily on video. So let's start benchmarking. All in at once our password. 
And here it goes. And guess what? We'll speed on through. And there we are. Our UFS module with its Samsung flash memory has achieved an average read speed of 1.1 gigabytes a second and an average write speed of 273.3 megabytes a second. And so, again, these are good results for storage on an ARM SBC, but way below what potentially could be achieved. And regardless, we've now come to the end of our UFS module experiments. UFS has only just started to arrive on ARM SBCs. And on the ROC 4D, as we've seen, whilst performance is clearly better than EMMC and most NVMe SSD implementations, we are clearly some distance from harnessing the full speed of the technology. Nevertheless, UFS has the potential to transform SBC storage, reversing the trend towards NVMe SSDs. And if you're wondering about x86 mini PCs, well, UFS is starting to appear on these two, including Microsoft's new 365 Link Cloud PC. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.